So anyway, I had this, uh, had this Cadillac motor, which ran, but it was hooked to this data flow transmission, and I went, went on the ham, which is the uh, uh, hot rod message board thing for a lot of guys, and I asked around, you know, is that data flow transmission any good? Is it worth saving? And they said, it makes a real good boat anchor. They said, you know, data flow equals data slow. So I was like, oh, okay. So, and I like gears too, because you know, I've been a truck driver and I knew all about, and, you know, uh, maxi dines and uniships and road rangers and 10 speeds and 8 speeds and 15 speeds and 13 speeds, 13 speed overdrives and reverse double sticks, you know. I knew about gears and I liked them. I liked gears. I felt like that you could do gears right. You know, like there was a, there was a, there was a gear prod up in the sky that watched you when you drove that big truck and you had a lot of weight on there and it really mattered. And when you shifted in gears, you either did it right or wrong and it was important to do it right. And I prided myself on doing it right. You know, double clutch thing, grab it up in there. You can feel, you can feel the teeth merge together when you've got a lot of weight on the truck. So I wanted gears in my car. So I was over to a guy's house one day. His name was Ron Valentine. Ron's dead now. He died um, probably about a year ago now. But Ron turned out with one of my neighbors. I actually met him here. And uh, I was over at Ron's house. He said, I got a transmission you can have. And I said, cool, free for me, you know. So he dug this old P5 Chevy transmission out. It's five speed overdrive. That's honking. But then getting it to work with this Cadillac motor was problematic because they didn't build a lot of straight shift Cadillacs. They built some Buicks, which were similar. But those things were like $1,500 if you could find one. And then you would find something that was ridiculously old. So what I wound up doing is, uh, and I spent more money on that than the whole rest of the car, but I, I found this guy, Will Cap, out in California. He made the flywheel. The uh, pilot bearing this thing is about as big as a biscuit, but he made that. And then I had to order a special hydraulic clutch thing to slide to the, it's, this, this uh, flywheel is inside the back of the motor right here. This is what they call a long block and sticks way out here. So the flywheel is way up in there. Kind of hard to get your transmission stuff in from there where it needs to be, you know. So it took a lot of took a lot of finagling, but I got it to work. So I got that many years working. Uh, what else? This radiator came off of eBay. I don't know what it fit, but it was about six inch wider than it is now. And these headlight brackets was already on it. So I just cut the thing back in two. And by the way, I'm the worst welder in the world. I feel like that letting people see my welds is a public service because people that don't weld very good can look at my welds and they can say, oh, can you get away with that? I can get away with what I can do. You know, so I really, feel, I really feel proud to be able to show off how bad a welder I am. In fact, uh, I own a wire welder and up until recently I couldn't work it. I welded this with a stick welder. So this is the only kind of welder I knew how to use back in the day. You know, somebody handed me a stick welder. I had a, a, a father-in-law who had tractors and he's always wearing the cleats off the off them caterpillar threads and so he had me a welder and he said, just weld right across there and just build it up and we're gonna drive it down. Just weld, just keep welding. And so I learned how to weld welding cleats on the tractor. So that's about all I ever knew how to do. So anyway, my public service is to let y'all see how ugly my weld is, but you know, it kind of fits in, I mean. Just look at it. Yeah. <laughs> Just look at it. 